Hi, I'm Delaney McKenzie, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about measuring alpha using information coefficients. And thanks to, and I apologize for completely butchering this pronunciation in all likelihood, but Joachim Arvidsson uh, on the Quantopian forums for suggesting this topic. So at the core of any algorithm is some predictive ability. Any trading model has to predict uh, whether or not um, some event will happen in the future. Because at the end of the day, anything in finance is really saying, I think this thing is going to happen in the future, so I'm going to place a bet on that thing happening by buying or selling an asset. And if I am correct, I'll make money. And if I am incorrect, well, hopefully I won't lose too much money. But at the end of the day, everything is about predictive ability. And whenever you're doing any kind of trading or building a trading model or trading strategy, you want to have some way to measure that predictive ability and be confident that it will keep being able to predict stuff going forward into the future. So information coefficient is one of the most common measures of predictive ability. And like any statistic, it is measured historically on data that's already been collected. But there's a variety of techniques such as out of sample testing, cross validation, um, you know, having a good economic hypothesis that can make it more likely that that predictive ability will keep going forward into the future. But what is information coefficient? Well, information coefficient is a measure of historically how well your predictions have lined up with the actual outcomes. And more specifically, information coefficient is just a Spearman rank coefficient. So Spearman rank correlation is a type of correlation which ranks your data before running the correlation. And this is done in order to make it a little bit more robust to outliers. So uh, what Spearman rank correlation coefficient tells you is, on average, historically, if you look at all of my predictions each day, how well do those predictions correspond with an outcome? Most canonically, the outcome that you'd care about is the returns of individual assets, and that's what's used to compute an information coefficient. You look at the weight that your portfolio would have put on an asset, whether it be positive to buy or negative to sell, and you look at how that correlates with the future returns. You want positive weights to correlate with strong future returns and negative weights to correlate with negative or weak future returns. So at the end of the day, we're testing whether or not the algorithm is predictive. And we're using information coefficient to do that. So what are we trying to do in this case? We're trying to test a specific property of information coefficient. And we can do that statistically. If we measure information coefficient each day, we're going to get a score on each day which says, how predictive was your strategy or model or algorithm on that day? And you can see that here in this rolling information coefficient plot. You can see how it changes day over day. Real data is noisy. Uh, real algorithms will have a lot of variance, um, not necessarily a super strong signal noise ratio, especially when you're looking on a day by day basis. So, what do we do to try to determine if this model actually has predictive power? Well, we want to run some statistical tests on the information coefficient to determine what? To determine whether or not it is different from zero. So we can start using p-value tests, or null hypothesis testing. Now, of course, there's a lot of debate going on right now about whether or not null hypothesis testing uh, is the best way to move forward, and a lot of debate between Bayesian and frequentist statisticians. But we're going to shelve all that for now and just think about p-value testing. So what you want to do is you want to test to see if the information coefficient appears to be being drawn from a distribution with a mean of zero, or it appears to be being drawn from a distribution with a mean that is not zero. Uh, in this case, it actually doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Both are fine because it's a correlation. Uh, and uh, if it's negative, you can just swap your, uh, your predictions, and you should be OK. But what you're going to do is do some kind of uh, maybe a t-test. Start with a t-test, maybe work forward from there, and try to test to see if the information coefficient is meaningfully differ different from zero. As always, try to test all of the assumptions that your test makes. Make sure that the distribution isn't super weird. Make sure that it isn't super long-tailed. Although oftentimes in finance, you kind of have no ability to avoid that. Um, but what you're trying to do is test that hypothesis as to whether or not your information coefficient is meaningfully different from zero.